we're still dealing with triangles, but we're getting away from the circumcenters, orthocenters, all those different things. And we're going to look at the relationships angles have with their sides. Um, so we're going to look at some inequalities in our triangles. So our first thing, definition of an inequality. Well, here's our first thing that we're looking at. If A is equal to B plus C, so if I have two numbers and it's equal to another number, that number is greater than each of those individually. Uh, so for example, if I said 8 is equal to 3 plus 5, that means 8 is greater than 3, and it's also greater than 5. Pretty straightforward, right? Uh, and we have the transitive property that goes along with that. So for example, for example, something like this, where I have 2 is less than 6, and 6 is also less than 10. Well, if 2 is less than 6, and 6 is less than 10, then 2 would also have to be less than 10. Okay, Something that makes sense. That, that would make sense there. The transitive, right? And addition and subtraction. So if I would happen to, this goes back to your algebra days. So I can use that same one. If 2 is less than 6, and I added 3 to both sides, 5 is still less than 9, right? If I use my algebra, right? Add, add something to one side, do it to the other side. Okay, so a couple properties there. The main thing we're going to deal with is the exterior angle inequality. Well, I know that for exterior angles, that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the two remote interior added together. So angle 2 plus angle 3. That was from a couple chapters ago. Well, let's think about that. If it's equal to those two added together, then I know that angle 1 has to be greater than 2. And angle 1 would also be greater than angle 3. Let's put these inequalities in a different color so we can see better. So angle 1 is greater than angle 2, and angle 1 is also greater than angle 3. And that was just our inequality property. <clears throat> so we're going to use that for exterior angle. So let's, let's use that. Let's use what we just learned. Name measures less than angle 14. So I'm looking at angle 14 here. So the first thing is, I can see that 14 is the exterior angle to this triangle right here, which means I know it. I know it's greater than the two remote interiors. So I know it's greater than 11, and I know it's greater than 4. So I'm going to put angle 4, angle 11. Well, is angle 14 remote ex or exterior to anything else? I don't think so. So now let's go look at one of those two angles. I know it's greater than 11 and 4. So let's take a look at 11. So if I know 14 is greater than 11, well, 11, isn't that an exterior angle to this triangle? That means 11 is greater than 2 and 3. Well, if 14 is greater than 11, it has to be greater than 2 and 3, since 11 is greater than those two. So I can also say angle 2 and angle 3. That's like our transitive property there. Well, let's, let's stay at angle 11 here. <clears throat> If I look, it's also exterior to another triangle, right here. So I know that 11 is greater than 6, and it's greater than angle 7. Yeah. If I looked at angle 4, I don't think that's exterior to anything. Um, so I can't use that at all. But if I looked closely, angle 9, if I look at angle 11 and angle 9, these two guys are vertical. So I could also add angle 9. I'm not saying you have to, but we can use something that we learned. Don't pay any attention to which ones look obtuse and acute or anything like that, because things can be drawn um, not to scale. So just do use your rules, your your uh, inequality rule for exterior angles, and you could use vertical as well as if you'd like. So let's go the other way. Let's find angles that are greater than angle five. So here's angle five. Well, I want angles that are greater than that. Well. I only know my one thing, my exterior angle. So if I look, 10 is an exterior angle to this triangle, where 5 ends up being a remote interior. So I know 10 is greater than 4 and 5. So I know that angle 10 is greater than 5. Well, let's stay with angle 5 here. Is there another exterior angle to this triangle? Well, 14 is, but I'm not going to use that because 5 isn't remote interior compared to 14. But if I look at 12, that's an exterior angle from this triangle. So I know that 12 is greater than 4 and 5. So 12 has to be greater than angle 5. 
Okay, so now let's use some of that information. Well, let's take a look at 10, that first one that I found. If that's greater than 5, are there any numbers that are greater than 10? Yeah, keep looking for your exterior angles. So if I look at this triangle, this guy's exterior, so I know it's greater than 2 and 10. Well, if 10 is greater than 5, that means 16 also has to be greater than 5. Okay, let's keep looking. Is there any other exterior angles looking at 10? Um, boy, I don't think so. Because 9, that doesn't work because that's next to 10. It's not part of it. Uh, what about 12? If I look at 12, do I have an exterior angle for 12? Yeah, it looks like I got 15. So I know 15 is greater than 12 and 7. So also angle 15 there. And I think if you look closely enough, if I go back to 5, I'm just going to make sure I got them all. I said that 10 was exterior. Well, if I look at this triangle again, so the 10 is exterior. Do I have another exterior angle besides 10? I do. 17 is also exterior. So I know 17 is greater than 11 and 5. So I can say angle 17 as well. And I think that's all I can for sure say. Okay, so just do the best you can using that um, inequality with your, your exterior angles. Okay, getting a little simpler here. Angle side relationships. Hopefully these will start to make sense. If one side of a triangle is longer than another side, then the angle opposite the longer side has a greater measure than the angle opposite the shorter side. So let's think about what that says. It's saying if xy is 9, its angle opposite, right here, angle z, is going to be greater than the angle opposite 7 because 9 is greater than 7. So I know that angle z is greater than angle X. Same works the other way. So if I have an angle bigger than another angle, so for example, 67 is greater than 43, so I know its side opposite, XY, has to be greater than the side opposite of 43, YZ. Okay, not too difficult. Should make sense. Use the figure to determine the relationship between the measures of the given angle. So now we're just going to write an inequality, either less than or greater than. So I'm looking at QRW, QRW, so I'm looking at this angle, and I'm looking at RWQ, RWQ, and I'm looking, so I got to compare the side opposite. So on the side, I got 45, and I got 47. So I know that the side with 47 is bigger. So the first one, this red one, measure of QRW, I know is less than the other one, because it had, right, this one had 45, this one had 47, so I know it's less than that. Okay, let's go to the next one, RTW. So I got RTW right there, so I'm looking at 34, and TWR, which I'm looking at this guy, so 35. Well, it looks like measure of angle RTW is less than measure of angle TWR, because 34 is less than 35. And lastly, RST, right here. So looking at 35 again. And TRS, angle opposite, looking at 22. So RST must be bigger, measure of angle RST must be bigger than the angle of TRS. And same thing goes if I was given angle measures and was comparing sides. So a little about inequalities in triangles.